Hey, it's Sarah with House Copper. Welcome to the copper shop in the middle of winter. I apologize in advance if you can hear the wind whistling outside my shop or the heater kicks in. It is like negative 20 wind chill right now. And, uh, and it is not warm outside. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna ho hopefully do this fast enough before the heater kicks in because it's really loud. I'm going to do another one of those, you know, how to identify a tool. Um, I'm going to do the grooving machine and I wanted to preface this. I've had a couple of people mention like, oh, I'm showing um, how these machines work um, or what to look for, but I'm not showing like how they're used in any application. And I will uh, let remind you all know, and I know they get buried, but I did a whole series of how to use every single one of these machines maybe a year or two ago. And I will try to find that and then post that in the links below. So if you like are like, oh, there's the grooving machine, how do I use it? It'll be easy to find in the description below um, from a much earlier video of how it's used and with it actually being used to make whatever it's supposed to make. So I just don't want to replicate. And I know a lot of people are, are asking, the whole point of this series is, how do I know which tool it is? Because it's hard to always know, like, is it a beading machine? Or, well, beading's are obvious, but is it burring? Is it wiring? Is it turning? How do I know what it is? And what to look for if I'm going to be buying my own tools. So that's what this is for. So without further ado, we're gonna do a grooving machine today. I used to call this the smashing machine because I couldn't remember the names of the tools. And uh, to me, it just smashed down the seams. The, uh, and the, uh, the, the grooving machine also is for um, uh, putting down crimp seams. So that's, that's the kind of seam where you have, you know, one, one seam up um, at 90, another seam, you know, at 90, you put them together, you do it like this, and then you essentially used to um, use, um, you used to use um, grooving things like this. So if you can see um, this, they come in multiple different widths. You know, this one's a much skinnier one. Um, and you can kind of see there too, the difference, like, you know, one's thinner ones. So um, these are, there's a whole set of these that, that come um, in various widths for different widths of crimp seams. Um, and when you see the, the grooving machine, you're gonna see, you know, that has essentially just one width on the wheel. So um, that's just because it's kind of a more standard, standardized width. At some point they standardized the measurements, I guess. So without further ado, let's head over to the, uh, the grooving machine. Okay, this is the grooving machine. As you can see, it is huge, like, this is my arm. It's almost as long as my two arms. I mean, it is, it's huge. So you need a ton of room for this because this back here, after you pull it forward, has to be all the way back, especially if you do long pieces. So here's where your groove is gonna be. And here is the most important part of what you're gonna be looking for. You want a wheel that is intact. You want a wheel that has a relatively large, area for putting down a seam for setting it down um when you're when you're doing the grooving and you want it to move very easily now some of these will be smaller some of these will have different wheels that you can change in and out if you can find one of these with more than one wheel um, that you can interchange right here you're in luck they're hard to find um, and this is a 20 inch groover, meaning it's, you can do a, um, a crimp seam about 20 inches long. Um, you, you can go shorter obviously, but your max length is 20 inches. Then you're also gonna want to look for one with an intact handle. Mine came without a handle. And so uh, Bob and I actually uh, ground down over a while a cast iron meat grinding handle and, and retrofitted it to that particular part. Um, so if you find them with, you know, with missing handles and things, you're fine. You can always like rig something up. But really you're looking for this whole contraption here to be in working order. Um, you don't wanna go um, super small 
if you can go um, as big as uh, you know, a good long, you know, anywhere, you know, up to 20 inches. This is a nice standard size grooving machine. Uh, anything smaller than that, you're gonna be limited to how tall of a seam or long of a seam you can run. Mostly you're putting, you know, items on here and you're running the seams this way. Um, I wanna show you also a close up over here. So I wanna show you here. So see this whole area where the seam goes? If you're working in tin and copper, you are, <laughs> you want this to be as smooth as possible. If it's pitted, it's going to actually dent your, uh, your plate, your tin plate or your copper, your copper plate. You're, you're going to end up seeing dents or grooves inside on the inside of your piece. So you're going to really want to make sure if you're looking at one of these that the seam area where you're going to lay down the interior seam is smooth and not pitted by improper use. So there is the um, grooving machine, the groover. Um, like I said, you can do it by hand. Um, you can get the individual groovers, especially if you work in a lot of different seam thicknesses. But this is a pretty thick one. This can go about a quarter of an inch for a crimp seam without um, ruining it. And if you're going with a narrower crimp seam than a quarter inch, which is what this wheel can accommodate here, right there. If you're going smaller, you can use this for a skinnier seam to, to groove that, but you can't go wider or it's gonna really wreck your seam and look awful and it'll run off and things like that. So I hope this helps with your searches for the tools of the trade. Um, like I said, I'll post the video down below of how to use this. And um, hopefully that'll clear up any questions. But as always, let me know um, any thoughts, questions, comments, um, your experiences with grooving machines. And I will, uh, I'll answer them as soon as I can. So in the, in the meantime, if you're up north, stay warm. If you're down south, stay cool, and uh, I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.